Finally, after months of waiting, we are at last getting the Swimsuit Rabbit Platoon students. Swimsuit Miyako, Swimsuit Saki, and Swimsuit Miyu. A lot of people are excited for them, including me, as they are arriving in the latest Blue Archive update this week, alongside the Rabbit Platoon and the Mystery of the Missing Shrimp event. So, in this video, I'll be taking a look at the new units and reviewing them, to see if they are actually good units and if they are worth pulling for. So, without further ado, here is a review of the Swimsuit SRT students. First, let's start off with everyone's favourite not a rabbit, but she can definitely mate like one, Swimsuit Miyako. She is a raid striker tank with yellow armour, who has S combat power in indoor terrains, B in field and D in urban, as well as having this equipment which allows her to be an evasive focus tank while dealing decent damage. Swimsuit Miyako has a 2 cost EX skill which decreases the crit damage resistance of one enemy for 50 whole seconds while dealing damage to them. Her basic skill increases her evasion for 25 seconds every 30 seconds, while her enhanced skill increases her max HP and for her sub skill, her cost recovery increases which lasts for 10 seconds after successfully evading 50 attacks. At UE40, her evasion increases too with her enhanced skill plus, while at UE50, she gains her SS combat score in indoor terrains. Swimsuit Miyako's main use in PvE lies in the Gregorius raid. If you don't have a tank like Mine for the particular raid, Swimsuit Miyako is an excellent alternative. As for one, she is an evasion tank who can evade the enemy's attacks ensuring her survival. And two, she can plant the crit damage resistance debuff on Greg that helps in increasing the debuff counter and allowing your DPS units to deal more crit damage. Not only that, Miyako having a low cost EX skill is convenient, as you can use it to quickly cycle through your units if you have to. And finally, while her sub skill might take some time to activate, depending if she manages to successfully evade Greg's attacks, a boost in cost recovery is always very good to have. These have made Swimsuit Miyako be able to fit into almost any Gregorius team, including a Minori focused team, as she can greatly boost the damage dealt by Minori's EX using the crit damage resistance debuff. And, once a sub skill activates, the cost recovery can help you reach the 7 costs for Minori's EX even faster. Outside of Gregorius, if you're struggling with the normal or hard missions, Swimsuit Miyako is a good pick to bring. But aside from that, I personally haven't seen Swimsuit Miyako being used in other high level PvE content. Perhaps she could be used in Great Wars in the raid armor stages. By the way, if you want to know what are Grand Assaults, you can check out Valiant's or Wound's videos, links in the description, where they explain about the mode in detail, or other raid content like Kaiten or Hieronymus, where she can act purely as a tank in one of your teams on Insane or Torment difficulties. But further testing is definitely required since both Kaiten and Hyro have not been the featured raid at all in JP since the release of Swimsuit Miyako. Moving on, Swimsuit Miyako also sees much use in PvP due to a number of reasons, one of which is that Swimsuit Miyako is another evasion tank with highly evasive tanks being the popular pick for PvP. Swimsuit Miyako receives a ton of evasion from her basic skill and enhanced skill plus, as well as from her equipment, specifically receiving evasion bonus from her T7 and T8 badge. This makes her a good unit to bring into PvP, and she's similar to the other evasion tank units like Yuka, Marina, and Tsubaki, though she lacks any self-heal option. Not only that, she can help increase your cost recovery by dodging 50 attacks. Finally, having a cheap EX skill cost in PvP is beneficial, and she should pair well with Swimsu Shiroko, who is coming soon as the latter can reduce your team's EX skill cost by 1, making Swimsu Miyako's EX skill even cheaper at 1 cost. With all that being said, I'm not particularly well versed in the PvP side of the game, which is why I couldn't go further into detail about her use in PvP, so please let me know if I made a mistake anywhere. Overall, Swimsuit Miyako's main use lies in PvP, where she can shine as an evasion tank, but she is still an excellent unit to bring into PvE, specifically the Gregorius Raid. Hence, I would say you should pull for her if A. Rabbit Sex, B. You're into PvP since she is a good PvP unit, or C. You care about the Gregorius Raid. If none of those apply to you though, or if you're saving for another unit instead, since Swimsumiyako is unlimited, then I would suggest you skip her banner. 
Moving on to Swim Sasaki, whose midriff is a fucking godsend, and who, let's be honest, you didn't know was that stacked, is slightly similar to Swim Sun Miyako, as she is an explosive striker student with yellow armor, but compared to her regular version, she's a support unit. Her terrain moods are exactly the same as Swim Sun Miyako's, with S indoors, B in field, and D in urban. Plus, these are her equipment, which as you can see, is focused on increasing her damage output. Looking at her skills, Swim Sasaki's 4 course EX deals damage to a single enemy while decreasing the defense, attack, and crit resistance for 50 seconds. With her basic skill, she deals damage to enemies in a fan-shaped area every 15 normal attacks, with additional damage being dealt against medium-sized enemies. Her enhanced skill increases her accuracy, and finally, her sub-skill is quite unique, as it increases both hers and your team's special student's attack. However, it doesn't work if your special unit is a healer or buffer, and it has to be an offensive special student like Mashiro or Hibiki. At UE40, her enhanced skill plus also gives her increased debuff duration, meaning the debuffs that she applies last longer. At UE50, her S combat power indoors improves to SS just like Swim Swim Miyako. Isn't she kinda copying Miyako a little too much now? Hey, maybe Saki copies her so much, she becomes less soon and more dere. Then she starts telling us senseis that she wants to get married and mate with us like rabbits. Ah, <sighs> a man can dream. Swim Sasaki's main appeals aren't her tummy or her stackness. It's her EX and sub skills, which have made her an essential unit for the Gregorius raid. As you may already know, Greg's mechanics mainly revolves around placing a specific number of debuffs on him so that your team deals more damage. With Swim Sasaki's EX, you can already place 3 debuffs, significantly increasing the debuff counter when you need it to while dealing damage to him. Not only that, these debuffs are actually quite useful, as you can do more damage to Greg since his defense and crit resistance are lowered, plus reduce the damage he deals since his attack is lowered as well. Meanwhile, her sub skill, which again increases the attack of special students, can greatly help the offensive special units in your team for that raid especially someone like Swim Swim Miyu, Maid Yuzu, Nagisa, or the creme de la creme of special units for Greg, Minori. Speaking of which, while Swim Swim Saki can fit into any Gregorius team due to her usefulness in dealing with the raid's mechanics, she is also a very important unit for a Minori team, since she can boost the power of Minori's EX skill with her sub skill. For other PvE content, she is obviously a neat choice to bring into missions, while for higher level content like other raids, she could probably probably be a filler unit in one of your teams for Hyrule Insane or Torment, acting as a debuffer or as a striker subslave, meaning that she's in the team just for her sub skill. For the same reasons, she could be an option for your team for Extreme Kaiten Phase 2, even though she isn't good in either of Kaiten's terrains. But I wouldn't bring her into Kaiten Insane or Torment since she'll be weak to the boss's piercing damage. Or you could try using her in one of the Grand Assaults like Red Armor Bina, who is coming this week, though the boss's damage type might be a problem again. But overall, Swimsuit Saki is an excellent unit to bring into Greg, as she can massively help with the debuff mechanic as well as boosting your team's special student's damage. Not only that, she's arguably one of the most important units for that raid and is the more popular pick for Insane Greg, even more so than someone like Mina, whose EX's debuffs while good isn't great when compared to Saki's, and Saki can offer more with her sub skill. But outside of Greg, other than being used as a striker sub slave, much testing is still needed, especially for Kaiten and Hyro, cause again, like Miyako, there hasn't been either raid in JP since her release. So if you want to make your Greg runs easier, or if you want to sink your face into those cojones while licking that tummy which will bear my child, then you should definitely pull for her. Sorry, I just really like Saki. But like Swim Swim Miyako, you can skip her if you're saving for a limited character. Like the pervy OP swimsuit girl, or our stinky librarian, or Whoa, Hina! Finally, we have Swimsuit Miyu, our favorite trash cunny, I mean bunny, who looks even cuter with her swimsuit. Unlike Swimsuit Saki and Swimsuit Miyako, Swimsuit Miyu is a 1 star welfare character, meaning that you can get her for free from the new event, and you can farm for her alefts through the event. She is a special explosive dealer whose terrain moods are A in indoors, B in field, and C in urban. Lastly, these are her equipment, and as you can tell, it really focuses on boosting her crit. That swimsuit must have done 
done something to Miyu, cause now finally, her EX can deal guaranteed crit damage to enemies in a rectangular area, unlike her normal version, whose EX cannot crit. Her basic skill deals damage to enemies in a fan-shaped area, though it activates every 70 seconds. Her enhanced skill increases her attack, and her sub-skill increases all allies' crit damage. At UA40, she gains even more crit damage from her enhanced skill plus, and at UA50, her mood in urban terrains increases from C to A. Unlike her regular counterpart, Swimsuit Miyu is actually a good unit, as she is a strong rate AoE damage dealer. This is mainly due to her EX being able to guarantee crit. Not to mention, she gains more attack from her enhanced skill, and even more crit damage from her enhanced skill plus and her equipment, further enhancing her DPS. Her sub-skill is also decent, as being able to passively increase your ally's crit damage is quite good. However, her only flaws are that her EX skill cost is a bit too high, and her basic skill takes way too long to activate, at a whopping 70 seconds. The only time 70 seconds is acceptable is when I'm in bed with Miyu, but other than that, she's a pretty solid AoE character. You can use Swimsuit Miyu in a bunch of PvE content, as she is a free alternative to Hibiki. For instance, you could use her in your normal missions, or perhaps the Gehenna scrimmage stages, or even in joint firing drills that require AoE units like the current one. In regards to raids, she sees quite a lot of use in Gregorius, as she can be used if you do not have Minori or if you're running a second team for insane or torment difficulties. She could also potentially be used in Kaiten Phase 1, where you will need AoE units to hit multiple ranges at the same time. You could probably also try her in Cheese or one of the Raid Armor Grand Assault stages, like Raid Armor Perodzilla, Raid Armor Cheese, or Raid Armor Ghost Phase 1, with all these raids requiring you to defeat the mobs. Overall, I would say you should farm for Swimsuit Miu, cause for one, you can get her a left for free just by playing the event. So why wouldn't you? And two, she is actually actually a good special AoE damage dealer that can be a good alternative, especially if you're new to the game and you don't yet have someone like Hibiki or you missed out on Maid Yuzu's event. When farming for her LFs, I would say you should aim for at least 5 stars or better yet UA40 since she gets more crit damage. And that is all the SRT swimsuit students. Ultimately, while it is up to you whether to pull or not, in my opinion, you should at least try to get one of them, preferably Swimsuit Saki. Because if not, you might not have anyone suitable for Greg. Sure, you could try to use any other raid student, or you could try the Aru team strat which is tough to pull off. But if you don't have the right units, you'll have to suffer through the increased incoming damage since you might have little to no debuffs on Greg. Which is why my advice is to try and get at least one of them. But if you really don't give a shit about Greg, or you don't have enough pyroxenes, or you're saving for a special student, or for one of the upcoming limited banners, hey, I completely understand. There's a lot of good banners that are coming, so you gotta save when you can. And hey, maybe you get them during the 2.5 anniversary banners instead, when the 3 star drop rate is doubled. In any case, that's all from me, and let me know if you're pulling for either Swimsuit Miyako or Swimsuit Saki or both. Also, I'd like to thank y'all for helping me reach 500 subs, and I couldn't have done it without you guys' support, and I really appreciate it. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the review, let me know if I made a mistake anywhere, or if you have anything to add. And Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go kill some seagulls, then reward myself by licking Saki's tummy.